Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending February 10th, 2018. And as you may have guessed, this TDD report is going to be about one particular subject. What happened this Tuesday at around 2.45 Central, 3.45 Eastern, 15 minutes before the launch window closed, the launch of the Falcon Heavy spaceship. And it looks like the United States is back in business as far as the heavy lifting of uh, objects into outer space and uh, hopefully very soon lifting the crews back into orbit for the space station maybe back onto the moon so yeah I think that's the best thing that America is finally back in the heavy space launch business and we're not more, we're no more renting space um, cabs from the Russians and using their rockets to get to the uh, International Space Station so first I'll talk about the takeoff um, they were going to call this originally a success if it just cleared the launch pad without blowing up because in any kind of test like this, this is the first time they, it's, it, as a Falcon 9 rocket, it's very reliable, but when you strap three of them together, you got a whole different deal here. I mean, they've never strapped three engines before and actually did this kind of thing. So this was basically just a test launch and, um, you had three times the sound waves, um, causing trying to cause instruments and parts and pipes to pull apart. You have three times the shaking and vibration. You have the kinetic energy, three times the kinetic energy of three rockets trying to rip pieces apart and rip the rocket ship apart itself. And uh, yeah, you just have so many things that could possibly, all your, <coughs> all of your things that can go wrong are basically tripled or more. It's probably not even, you know, your chances when you have three things together, your chances of things going wrong actually more than triple. So they got past that. They got up into orbit. And nothing majorly went wrong up into orbit. They had the uh, boosters come down in, uh, in synchronization. But uh, let's talk about the original orbit, too, and some of the misunderstandings. And even I was caught up in those misunderstandings, too. The original press releases were talking about that they were going to Mars, and it gave people the impression that the rocket ship was going to go up and uh, reach Mars and then go into some kind of Mars orbit in the space craft and the Tesla Roadster was going to be uh, orbiting around Mars. Well, not exactly true. The original plans were for it to go just barely past Mars orbit so it wouldn't have any danger of actually hitting into Mars and contaminating or anything like that. So the original plan was to just go just barely past Mars orbit. Well, they burned a little bit longer than they anticipated with the uh, engine, so they actually are going to end up pretty close to the asteroid belt. So maybe pretty close to the uh, dwarf planet Ceres, which resides in the asteroid belt. So, uh, yeah, the orbit has proved more than enough. And I think that's probably a good thing that they went past Mars orbit even a little bit farther, too. It kind of proves that, yes, this is the kind of spaceship that can get people to the Mar to, to Mars, no problem whatsoever. And uh, as far as the recovery of the boosters, some of, everybody that has seen the recovery, especially the two side boosters, have just said it, it almost didn't look real. I mean, it looked like a synchronized dive team or something like that coming down within seconds of each other, landing and engines shut off now. Unfortunately, the core part of the engine was supposed to come down and land on a drone ship about 100 miles off uh, land, but it missed by about uh, 100 feet or so. And because it was coming down, the uh, for some reason, two out of the three engines did not fire up properly, they think because maybe it ran out of fuel. And so it hit about 100 miles away from the drone ship, and it, because it was crashed into the ocean at about 300 miles per hour, threw a lot of pieces of shrapnel and metal onto the drone ship. So the drone ship was damaged pretty badly, too. So they say it's probably not even going to be salvaged. It's just going to probably sit on the bottom of the ocean. So anyway, um, what does this mean for the future in space, really? Um, we're probably going to have more flights of heavy satellites and cargo before we put any humans on top of the Falcon Heavy. Now they're talking about pretty soon just the Falcon 9 since it's pretty reliable and had, uh, has had lots of flights, especially bringing cargo and stuff like that to the space station. They're talking about the fact that uh, that will probably be putting crew in orbits along with Boeing has won a bid too to uh, bring crews up to the International Space Station. So uh, between Boeing and SpaceX we will be actually flying our own astronauts up to the space station which is really nice to see. Um, the Falcon Heavy, they were talking originally, I think, about having it be the one to take the uh, astronauts to the moon for practice and then to Mars, but they're now talking about the BFR, the big freaking rocket. <clears throat> I'll say it in a nice way. They're talking about that the tests are going so well with that that they may use the Falcon Heavy just for heavy lifts to uh, 
geosynchronous satellites, multiple payloads, military missions, and stuff like that. But go on with the BFR as far as taking astronauts back to the moon or Mars. And uh, if you want to know the power, they talked about the power of this Falcon uh, 9 Heavy with the three um, rockets with 27 engines. It's the most powerful rocket in operation, but still not as powerful as the Saturn V. Now, the BFR will be more powerful than the Saturn V. It would take two Falcon Heavies to be uh, more powerful than what the Saturn V was when we had the astronauts going to the moon. So, yeah, it will uh, probably continue. Also, the Falcon 9s will continue supplying cargo to the space station. Um, maybe in two years or, or so, they're also talking about abandoning the space station just so that we can devote more money and resources, maybe turning the American part over to private industry or maybe just, you know, turning it over to whoever wants to use it. So by 2020, it's very possible we may have to divert enough money from the budget. And what's helpful is this particular rocket, the Falcon Heavy, and hopefully it will be the same with the BFR, is the fact that you can get payloads and heavy payloads up in orbit for way less expense. I mean, we're talking about a third of the cost per launch compared to the next competitor and uh, twice the cargo. It's something like 64, 64 tons of cargo for $90 million versus uh, about uh, what is it? Three hundred million dollars for um, uh, thirty-two tons of cargo going up. So they're beating the competitors quite a ways. And if they can keep the costs down, NASA will not have to increase the budget as much for Mars. Also, that could be a way that it actually hurts the budget in NASA too, because now that they can actually do it cheaper, the NASA budget might be cut even further as far as any future money to go to Mars. So you never know. That's that's up to politicians and people you know in the in the years to come to to work out but I'm really hoping I mean as some of you know my father actually took play, took part in the, the uh, NASA space missions to uh, the moon he started with the Gemini program and then worked through the Apollo program and uh, he finally did leave when they changed their mind they promised a lot of the engineers and the people working on the Apollo project that after they finished the moon they were going to go and start on plans to go to Mars and when they kind of decided to drop off with that and the interest just was waning from the public of going on to Mars. My father was rather disappointed and went into private industry instead. Now later he went back into the semi-military industry and uh, private industry to do with military for spy satellites and worked on projects like that but um, <clears throat> I always was kind of disappointed that we wouldn't go to Mars. So what I'm hoping myself as I can see in my lifetime even if it maybe takes to about the year 2040 or something like that I will hopefully be alive in my 80s and be able to see us actually land on Mars that's my hope and I remember SpaceX has more going than just the uh, Falcon they do have the Dragon program to where they're gonna have uh, crews into space too so we, we're gonna we're gonna hear a lot more from SpaceX and I will have to say give Elon Musk all the kudos in the world he is uh, totally I mean it's not been perfect there's been failures in the SpaceX program but he has far exceeded I think almost any reasonable person's expectations. So, yes, so nice to see the U.S. back in the heavy lifting space race. So, that's about it for this week. I'll have some links down below you can check out about the stuff I talked about. And take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.